the American Civil War was much more of a modern war than people give it credit for. It saw new and destructive technologies introduced to the battlefield in amounts previously unseen. Legions of inventors eagerly presented their ideas to the Union Army, hoping to secure lucrative government contracts. One such inventor was Elijah D. Williams, who believed that he had created a superior bullet to the standard 58 caliber Manet ball. This bullet is commonly referred to today as the Williams Cleaner Bullet, but we will get back to the name in a minute. It was lighter, could be manufactured with less material, was claimed to be more accurate, and utilized a different method of expansion upon firing the weapon. Standard Manet balls have a void in the base where gas enters and presses the walls of the bullet outward into the rifling. The Williams bullet, however, used a plunger system. The expanding gases pushed this plunger upwards into the bullet. As the plunger moved upwards, it flattened out one or two concave zinc discs. These discs are what actually contacted the rifling and gave the bullet its spin. Williams convinced the government to begin trials on his bullet, and even secured an endorsement from Colonel Hiram Burdan of the famed Burdan's sharpshooters. The bullet passed trials and Williams was granted a contract to produce the ammunition for use by Union soldiers. Issues began to arise almost immediately after the soldiers started receiving the bullets. Soldiers found that the bullets were actually less accurate than normal Manet balls, and some future tests of the round confirmed this. There were also rumors of the zinc expansion disc having poisonous properties. Soldiers quickly began to despise the round, not wanting a missed shot because of the substandard bullet to get them killed, and threw them out whenever the Williams bullet was issued to them. This was especially easy to do because these projectiles were often packaged in red or blue paper as opposed to the standard white or brown of a normal cartridge. The government also had their own reasons for disliking the bullet. The primary reason was because they were in fact more expensive to produce as they had to be created from three or more parts instead of a single casting. It should also be said that these bullets were never intended to clean rifle bores upon firing. This misconception arose due to the fact that during trials for the second version of the projectile, it was noted that minimal cleaning properties were observed, however later tests disproved this. The only times Williams himself claimed this was in his patent application for the third variant, probably after seeing the comments from the trials committee on the second version. Neither the first nor second patent application have any mention of this, as it was not why he invented this bullet. Due to their lackluster performance and soldiers' disdain for them, the Williams patent bullet never replaced the Manet ball in service. Later in the war, an order was issued to reserve this ammunition for extreme circumstances only and to cease issuing it to frontline troops. Today, these bullets can be found in significant numbers almost anywhere Union soldiers marched or camped, a reminder of the failed design that grew to be universally hated by the men they were issued to. So here's a Williams Cleaner bullet in my own collection, and this one, it does have some ground action, which is why you can't see the rings that would have originally been right here, but you can see the plunger and the gap where the zinc disc would have been, but again, those zinc discs tended to degrade a lot faster than the lead did, so that's why they're missing on this example. This is a uh, comparison between the Manet ball and the Williams Cleaner bullet, so you can kind of see some of the differences. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a like and consider subscribing. I put out new videos on military and military history every week, and I try to make each one a little bit better than the last. Thank you.